Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models Memories Weekly, episode 148. Models Memories is a show about nothing and is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and wargaming experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week. How? Could I possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week, Games Workshop came out with another box and nothing. And I got some really good work done on some of my this year projects. Some of them I can talk about, but some of them will remain secret for now. But speaking of secrets, it's no secret. Co what comes in Games Workshop's box of whatever the heck. Celebrate Warhammer the Old World with a limited edition box of exclusive merch. Games Workshop just made another box like this for what their 40th, 30th, 35th, 70th year anniversary. And it came with exactly the same stuff in it. You get a hoodie, you get a t-shirt, you get a little dice bag, and you actually get kind of a cool blanket. The blanket I actually really dig is just it's just a, a fleece blanket with a printed old world map. That's kind of dope. I would actually want that. They they I think either during the pre-orders, like a special thing, they sold a map of the old world, but it was just the lamest thing. It was just a fold out like that plasticky paper. So you get all those creases. So maybe if like you threw a blanket on top of it and you ironed it really good without with no steam, you could maybe get it nice and flat. And if you put it in a frame, it would look OK. But like nobody wants that. Like when a board game comes with a fold out plastic paper mat and it'll never, ever lay flat and your models just can't get over the little folds of the paper. It's it's not real. It's not a real anything. It's just kind of trashy. Fleece blanket. That's not bad. Like I would actually honestly, if that was the only thing that came in this box, that wouldn't be too bad. I would actually want the map blanket because you just all bundled up or you wear it as a cape during your battles of old world. That would be kind of sick. The hoodie. Also, the design of the hoodie looks great. It's on the back. When did this start? When did we start putting the cool artwork on the back of the hoodie? I want to see it. I like when I when I'm looking at myself in the mirror, I want to see or just looking down. I want to see the really cool design. Like, I don't want to be like at the Golden Corral at the tater tot section and the guy behind me waiting for me to finish. He gets to see the cool artwork. But all I get to see is this little compass. It's nothing. Put it on the front. I get like. So they have it has like the little belly pouch, so maybe there's not enough room, but just get rid of the belly pouch because it nobody likes that. Nobody likes on a hoodie when there's just like this little gut pouch for your phone. It doesn't make any sense. Ah, it is a cool design. It would be nice on a T-shirt. Probably it has to be a really cool design or something. I really like to want a hoodie because I have one. I have one hoodie. I don't need more hoodies. It would have to be an ex exceptional hoodie for me to want a second hoodie in my life. The t-shirt is absolutely nothing. It's got the symbol of the shield and the little hammery thing. D nothing. It might as well just be a plain black t-shirt. And the dice bag is whatever. You can get a dice bag from every nerd store across the world. It's it, there's nothing to it. Overall, this swag bag coming out kind of after Old World. I think the two week pre order of Old World is coming to an end soon. So nobody actually even has their Old World yet and knows if they like this game. I guess there's been a couple of battle reports online, but yeah, it's just I assume that they're just going to keep doing this over and over and over again, because whatever swag company they're working with, this is like they're able to just put these boxes together really quick and really easily. Oh, if they ever did like a monthly subscription box. Can you imagine like a loot crate, but for Games Workshop properties? Ah, oh, I loved I think I think that company's now defunct, but I remember like in high school watching videos of people unboxing those things and it was always just garbage. Nothing as cool as an old world map blanket. That's actually that's actually not a bad idea. But speaking of not a bad idea, Games Workshop has kind of been doing cute little things like this. There's the little chibi figures. There's plush toys. They are going to seemingly keep doing these big boxes. I think that there is room in the market for actually good merchandise. Like with the little with the hoodie, the hoodie has like a little compass on the front. What if it was a real compass? 
like a real nice Jack Sparrow compass with like a lid you open up. Maybe it's got a sundial in there too because you just need a, a point and a triangle. Like that would be a product that would actually be worth something. I might actually want on the shelf. And some companies do this. Famously, Lego, they have their Lego Ideas, which is like kind of a weird crowdfunding Kickstarter, but it's a makes a retail products where people just come up with ideas. They're like, let's do the Simpsons Lego. And then if it gets 5,000 likes, then Lego considers it. And if they like the idea too, then they make it into a real set that you can eventually get. And they did do a Simpsons set and it was pretty darn cool. And I think Hasbro Pulse does something very similar. They just do more traditional Kickstarters, but it's really cool because you get stuff that you just wouldn't normally get like this. This is the alien pulse gun from Halo, or not pulse gun, the Needler. Isn't this just like the coolest freaking thing? It shoots nerf darts. These are made of rubber, so I haven't been able to break them yet, but I'll find a way, don't you worry. This is the coolest thing. It was kind of expensive, it was like a hundred bucks, but it was worth it. This thing looks so cool on the shelf. It lights up. I gotta figure out how to get it to not feed off of batteries because I'm using up a lot of batteries, but I'll, I'll figure that out. This would be, like, this sort of merchandise from Games Workshop would be sick. And arguably not as doable as, like, Hasbro Pulse or Lego Ideas, because Lego's designed to make Legos, and Hasbro's designed to make, like, Nerf guns and action figures, and 40K is only, or Warhammer is only designed to make miniatures. Although maybe that can be part of it. Like, crowdfunding, hey, should we make the Harud into an actual miniature so that we actually have a face to put to this weird, spooky, ominous name that pops up here and there in the novels. I think there'd be something to it, because, like, I'm sure that box, the, the Warhammer swag box, isn't that expensive. But if it was a little more expensive, but it came with something really, really cool, I think there'd be something to it. And kind of with the, the crowdfunding idea, you kind of get to know your market. Like you, you kind of like you figure at least 5,000 people want to purchase this Lego set. So that probably means 10,000 people might want it. So if we get it to target shelves, it'll move. Like it seems like a really, really good idea. Now, if I was Games Workshop and I was in charge of figuring this out, I would want to come up with a name for this company that really makes it sound like they like they're making things. I would say like a really good name would be Forge World. Let's call it Forge World. They're in charge of like crowdfunding interesting things. A bolter, like right off the bat, you got instant winners. A bolter, a space marine helmet, like maybe even get weird with it, like a, like a little Necron scarab. Like you knock out anything that's reasonably human sized. I guess it would have to be a um, an Imperial Guard bolter, not a space marine bolter, because space marine bolters are like twice the size. They would be enormous. Although, sometimes you can play with a little bit. A needler is supposed to be like three times this size, but to fit in the childlike hands of myself, they scaled it down a little bit and it's lovely. So I think there's just tons of room for actually interesting stuff. And I think it would actually, it would, it would like most people just ignore the swag boxes because they should, they come with junk. Nobody needs more hoodies, but like actually cool products could get your name out there, could just look interesting. You'd get articles written about you on like the nerd websites. Warhammer 40K bring in a chain sword with real working nerf chain. Like that would be kind of cool. Funnel more people into Warhammer, boom. Forge World's back in business. Ah, oh, Forge World, RIP. Nobody misses you, you're really expensive. But speaking of things that were really expensive, that was a bad segue, this wasn't very expensive. I finished my fairies. Well, I didn't finish my fairies, but I got them based. These are from Moonstone, a little skirmish game that I'm very excited to play with, and I purchased all of the fairies. Uh, these aren't all of the fairies. I own them, but I've lost the box. I can't find it. One day, oh my gosh, it's such a disaster down here. I'm in a basement full of models and tote boxes, and I just ordered more tote boxes. Eventually, I'll be doing this show 
from just a sea of tote, you'll see a wall of tote boxes with Sharpie labels in front of it. And that's all you'll be able to see is my eyes peeking up from over top of it. It's getting ridiculous. But I finished more models. On these guys and gals, I used bark to make the earth bigger so that they were properly centered directly over their bases because airspace is something that I, I'm really particular about. I like my models to exactly take up the cylinder of space directly above their base. It just makes gaming a little bit easier, it makes them easier to pick up. And I tried a new product that I've been toying with, coconut husk. Dirt is kind of a weird thing to replicate in miniatures. I've always used sand, but sand always kind of looks like sand, and it's really hard to find a grit of sand that is really, really thin, like, like a really, really like fine grain, fine grit of sand. If it's too big, it just looks chunky and like retro, like the classic Goblin Green bases. I've never come across too thin, but then it would just be dust. And I've heard of people using like baking soda to get a really, really fine powder. But then I feel like you have absolutely no control over it because as soon as you drip glue or super glue onto the baking soda, it just kind of explodes or it just moves a little bit. Actually, moving a little bit is a problem I ran into with the coconut husk. The coconut husk looks a lot like dirt, probably because it is dirt, essentially. It looks really good, and when I would sprinkle it on there, it would look so perfect. And then I went in with the glue, and the glue moved it a little, but not too much. And I, I mixed some glue with um, isopropyl alcohol, which reduced the surface tension so that it would just bleed in a little bit more. I got it pretty darn perfect. But then the coconut husk absorbed the glue and expanded a little bit. And I might have bought the wrong coconut husk. I bought like the brick of it that you buy for your iguana tank. And so you're kind of meant to reactivate it with water and then make it into the substrate for your aquarium. So there might be other types of coconut husk, maybe some that are like for planter, planter boxes where you sprinkle it on top to make the dirt look a little bit more presentable. So I might have to try out some different coconut products. And I'm a big fan of coconut products. Coconut oil, coconut shampoo. Weirdly, don't love the flavor of coconut. It's not bad, it's just not my favorite. But I had a heck of a time getting it just perfect on the bases. And I don't think it would be, I don't think it would ever really matter for a project that wasn't this small. These fairies are teeny tiny little things. These are probably like 25 millimeter brown bases. And these fairies are so, so incredibly small. For comparison, this is a normal Space Marine Intercessor. Absolutely towers over the tiny little fairy. And honestly, it's the wings and the little tree trunk doing all of the heavy lifting for this model. If it was just the fairy, actually I have one like that. This little lady is just standing on her base, teeny teeny tiny little thing. And the reason I bought the fairy faction is because I just can't get it for any other game. Every time I get a new game, I kind of want it to be a new experience that I haven't really had before. And it would, like, there's so many games right now that are normal knights. And I'm like Song of Ice and Fire, I have a faction for that. Old World Bretonians, Conquest, Last Argument of Kings. Like all of these games just are like normal dudes. And so I'm trying to figure out which one is my favorite normal dude so that I can try it out. But I cannot think of another miniature war game off the top of my head. That is fairies, little butterfly people. And the wings, they're not textured. So it's gonna be tons and tons of free handing, which I'm very nervous about, but I'm very excited to see what I can pull off. I also got some epic basing bits. And so each little fairy gets their own type of mushroom. And so each base is gonna be a little bit fun and a little get some, some more free handing on all those little toadstools. The coconut bark worked pretty darn good. I definitely think it's way better than sand. There's also just little bits of fiber and like wood chips mixed in there. So it, I think it definitely reads way better as dirt than just classic sand. I haven't found like the perfect thing for sand yet. I have a lot of the Vallejo texture pastes and they're not bad, but the only tricky thing with them is it's really hard to get rid of the brush strokes because it's such a thick pasty product. I've tried, I've heard very good things about the Pro Acryl texture paste, so I'll probably be trying that next, but it's really hard. It's really hard 
to base a miniature when you have like a really specific vision in your head and you need to drag it out of the ether. Cause on a miniature, you know, you can have like, I, like, I want it to be red. I want it to be blue. I want to put a little texture on there. So I'm going to use a little sponging. I feel like there's a lot of interesting ways to do it, but making a base from nothing is hard. It's much harder than actually painting a miniature, but I am excited for it. But speaking of being incredibly excited, nothing am I more excited for than our Patreon. Over there, we have a brand new STL terrain set every single month, and this month we have the Crashed Spaceship. A gigantic, the definition of a centerpiece piece of terrain, a beautiful gothic vessel cracked open across a battlefield. And if you always want to be up to date on the goings on here at Eons of Battle and be entered into our monthly giveaways, we're picking three followers to receive this month's terrain, and we're going to pick another follower to receive the terrain physically, printed for us by Only Games. You can follow the link in the description below to sign up to our newsletter. I got to get these little fairies all painted up, and I actually have to get all of my Arena Rex stuff painted up. I have so much stuff to get done before Adepticon, but I am here for it. Thanks for watching.